In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, Let there be lawn. Let there. God said, Let there be three. Okay. Darkness, no form. Okay. As big zero, sort of like the universe card or Saturn. Darkness. And let there be three. That's all that needed to be said. The Elohim just needed to say, let there be three, and three will create everything else. Will create the universe. Will create dimension. Will create time. Because relative motion within space creates time. And it all starts with the three. And we've been talking about this because... The Hebrew alphabet tells this whole story. And we've already talked about uh, the three mother letters, okay, which is uh, up, down, right, left, forward and backwards, or above, below, uh, north, south, east, west, and how those created, those opposites created the the macrocosm or the the planetary spheres of the, the six walls and the central Saturn and how those six walls intersect at right angles to form 12 edges of the cube and we're we're reading the Hebrew alphabet uh, in that order we read the three mother letters talked about that first uh, installment, and then the seven double letters, the planetary spheres, the walls of the cube, if you will, and and then uh, we've started working on the, the 12 uh, simple letters of the Hebrew alphabet, which are assigned to the 12 signs of the zodiac. And I'm just going to give you a quick example before we look at the letters themselves. Uh, uh, first of all, above is uh, uh, the planetary sphere, or the bet, the Hebrew letter bet, uh, which is Mercury, and the bottom one is uh, Luna, uh, or noon. So we got above and below. But uh, uh, the signs of the zodiac, starting with uh, uh, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, etc., which starts with the Hebrew letters that we few of them that we discussed yesterday. Hey, okay. So this would be the, let's see, this would be the north wall. Okay, we're looking south here at the north wall. Okay, and there we see Aries and Hay at the northeast corner. You see it? The edge. Aries, hey, Aries, hey. And this is the east wall. And the next Hebrew letter is Vav, which is Taurus. Okay. And Taurus is on the south east wall. So there, there's south. And there's the south east wall. Okay, so you get the picture. There's a... There's a certain method to the madness and how, how the, the various signs of the zodiac are assigned to the edges. But you'll notice that each of the edges has an opposite there because it shares it. And that's how the 12 signs of the zodiac, but more importantly, 12 is formed. 3, 7, and 12. Uh, Yes, they're applied to, to, to tarot cards. Uh, yes, they're applied to Hebrew letters. But in their essence, this, p 
peel away all of the, uh, the labels that we could attach to it. The pure, raw, unadulterated, naked essence is 3, 7, and 12. And even though the black center is a singularity, it's almost zero. Three, seven, and twelve. And it's if you got a tree of life floating around in your head, you can sort of see the uh, uh, how the the, the same uh, uh, dynamics plays out uh, in an, in another way. But we are at reading from the Chicken Kabbalah of Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford. Uh, and uh, let's see if I can find it right away here. If you are interested and would like to build your own cube and the tetrahedron, and uh, not tetrahedron, but the dodeca, uh, dodecahedron, uh, all of the forms for you to do that for yourself are in, let's see here if I can find the example to hold up. Come on. I don't think I did this yesterday. Oh, is in the Son of Chicken Kabbalah, which, there we go. All of these forms are in the Son of Chicken Kabbalah where every degree gives you another toy. A first degree for the mother letters, toy. A toy for the uh, second degree. And a toy for the third. And all of those are fun things. Let's see if I give you... Oh, I thought I had it all. I thought I had... Yes, it's forms like this. Okay, and there's there's one with uh, for the uh, second degree without the, the the edges, and there's one for the third degree with the edges, and uh, the dodecahedron. Now let's let us begin. Well, anyway, uh, uh, thanks everybody for the kind, <laughs> kind words yesterday. My phone seemed to work, uh, uh, work okay, and I think I'm going to just hold up one little thing here. This is from Chicken Kabbalah. There's our mother letters right there, Aleph Mem Sheen. Okay. Here's how they form the walls. Okay, those are the planetary spheres, the walls, and the center top. And there's the 12 signs of the zodiac and the 12 simple letters on the edges. It's simplicity itself. Actually, it is simplicity itself. It's so simple that... that uh, it overwhelms us. Okay, we are at the Hebrew letter, my favorite, actually, Hebrew letter, Lamed. There's Lamed. Okay. Lamed is path number 22, and it joins Gebura, number 5, to number 6, Tifereth. Okay. And here it is on the justice card. Lamed is path number 22. Okay, Lamed. The little yod at the top. See little yod at the top? Of the tower. Uh, the little yod at the top of Lamed towers over above the other letters and makes it easy to recognize. I, I think I'm going to try to read it like this for a while. Okay. 
No, I can't read it good enough from back over here. Wish I had a big giant llama to show you. But let me just do that. Llama looks like a snake that swallowed a brick and is now having second thoughts. Lamed is spelled Lamed Mem Daleth, or L-M-D. My initials, Lamed Ben Clifford. Balance. Let's, uh, let me uh, continue on. Lamed is spelled LMD. The three letters enumerate to 74. And it means ox goad. Also to teach and to discipline. The ox goad is the pointy stick that prods the ox or olive down the straight and narrow furrows of the field. Without the ox goad, the ox would be undomesticated, uh, an undomesticated animal, and Olaf would spin completely out of control. This indicates that there's a special relationship between Lamed, ox goad, and Olaf, ox. Now, Olaf, A-L, or Olaf, Lamed, the word Olaf, Lamed, Al, or El, is the name of God most holy. And L-A, or Lamed Aleph, means not. Lamed makes sure that the infinite power of the Holy Spirit of Aleph is channeled into what we perceive as natural patterns. I'm proud to have been named Lamed because it also means teacher and scholar. This is Rabbi Lamed Ben Clifford speaking. I'm his biographer. Lamed is one of the uh, 12 simple letters and represents the zodiacal sign of Libra, justice. Now, there's something else uh, that's uh, interesting about Lamed and, and Aleph. Uh, we could say that the goddess... Uh, of the tarot, the, the goddess of justice, of Libra, is the girlfriend of the fool. That's because uh, in the tarot sequence, which begins with zero, key number zero of the, of the fool, uh, it is sort of in a way out of the, the common sequence of uh, one, starting with the magician, one through 21. There's 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, though. In the tarot, they're only numbered one through 21. The fool, zero, we can say that precedes one, and we'd be right, but in a way, it's out of the sequence of the, of the, the rest of them. Lamed, the Hebrew letter Lamed, stands right in the middle of the 1 through 21 sequence. Okay, there's 10 numbered cards before Lamed, and there's 10 numbered cards after Lamed. Lamed is a fulcrum of a teeter-totter. That's what we used to call a seesaw, a teeter-totter of the numbered cards of the Hebrew alphabet. It is stationary, while the others careen wildly as, a, as opposing motions. Aleph, zero, immovable, just like Lamed. They go together beautifully. And like it says here, the uh, A-L spells the root word for God. And L-A means the root word 
for no is the word not so a l l a allah is a fantastic name for god just awesome okay the next uh, uh, simple letter is the letter nun there we go there there we go nun path number 24 joins tifereth number six beauty to net sock victory nun looks a lot like gimel and that's why that's why there's a typo well anyway Nun often look uh, is uh, confused with with uh, uh, Gimel. Uh, see the well, let's see maybe I'll describe it. The only difference is Nun's leg connects solidly with the base, and there's also a Nun final, which like is like a huge long uh, stretched out vav. And that's it appears at the end of the end of the word. Now I'll hold this up while I read. There's none. Okay. None is the third final letter. When used at the end of a word, it looks like a vav with a very long leg, as Lon just said. It also looks like that little mirror on a stick that the dentist sticks into your mouth. <laughs> the numerical value, well, that's the, that's the nun, I gotta show you. That, where's the nun, okay. See where it says nun final word in a box? Doesn't that look like the little mirror that the uh, dentist sticks in your mouth? I don't digress. It's, I wrote it right in the book here, or the rabbi did. Nun is spelled Nun Vav Nun. The three letters enumerate to 106 or using a Nun final, five, uh, 756 and means a fish or fishes. Fish are known for their ability to breed like crazy. Nun represents fecundity and regeneration. When dead, fish decay rapidly and smell terribly. Nun is also the letter of decay. This really isn't a paradox when you consider the fact that fertilizer smells terrible but helps things grow. Known as one of the 12 simple letters, represents the zodiac sign of Scorpio. And it's the tarot trump death. Okay, the next card is Sagittarius. And that's Samak, the very next one. In order, let's see here. There's Samak. Samak is the path number 25. It joins Tifereth Beauty to Yesod the Foundation. So that's for, it joins 6 to 9 right there on the middle pillar. So that tells you right away this is a special, special uh, path. Samak has a roof and a right leg identical with hay and cat. The right leg connects with the, with the top edge of a broad parallelogram. The left leg reaches from the left edge of the base to the left underside of the roof. If you've got your crayons, I hope you're, you're copying this. Samak, do not confuse with Mem Final. Now look, look how similar those are. They're almost exactly the same, 
except the the mem final is just a tiny bit wider just a tiny bit wider and usually uh, when you see it uh, uh, written out or in many fonts it has that elongated even more so as not to be confused with uh, with Samic. Samic, here we go, is the temperance old temperance card. Now there's a Samic. Okay. Uh, and notice at the base there, the base sort of has a parallelogram uh, that, uh, in other words, it's it's got a notch at the end. Let me try to find if I can find uh, our mem just to let's see here. Okay, here's a mem. Okay. And there's a Samic. Excuse me. And a mem final looks almost like a, a Samic. It's just infuriating. Okay. Here we go. Happy little mem. I feel like Bob Ross here. The Bob Ross of Kabbalah. Um, Samak is spelled Samak Mem uh, Kef. And the three letters enumerate to 120 or using calf final, uh, 600. Uh, and it means a tent peg or a prop. In biblical times, the tent peg was the most important and potent symbol because it was absolutely indispensable as a tool for the proper erection of the tent. Not only did it ensure the tent would rise toward heaven, but it also simultaneously secured it to earth. Now, where's the, can we see the, well, its position on the tree of life, right there, joining uh, nine and six. All this pointy, Phallic symbolism seems rather paradoxical when we consider the extreme female shape of the letter itself. Samic's meaning is phallic, but its shape suggests all things circular. The canopy of heaven, the vagina, the womb. Psalmic is one of the 12 simple letters, represents the zodiacal sign of Sagittarius or temperance or in Thothdeck, Crowley's renamed it art. This is my tarot of ceremonial magic. The next small or simple letter is the very next one in order, Oyen. Oyen. Oyen, it can mean A, A Y or A U or O or sometimes even N G. Okay, don't confuse it with Zadi. So there's an Oyen and there's a Zadi final. Okay. Oyen is the path number 26. It joins Tifereth, or number 6, to Hode, Splendor. Oh, I'll show you because I went to the trouble of... There. Oyen 
Oyen is very distinctive. It is built upon a bold, right-leaning, diagonal banana. There is one yod connected to the top of the banana, and a zion stabs the banana's midsection. It looks very much like an English lowercase y. Don't confuse with Saudi final. Oyen is spelled Oyen Yod Nun. The three letters enumerate to 130, or using a nun final, 780, and mean I. Unlike a window, hey, that allows light and images to both enter and exit, the house, the I, is more of a one-way proposition. Through the I, our inward being looks out on the world. For this reason, and numerous others, Oyen has been traditionally associated with the meatus, the opening at the tip of the penis, through which the semen passes on its one-way adventure to egg land. Oyen also means fountain, spring, source. Do I need to draw us a picture here? Oyen is one of the 12 simple letters and represents the zodiac sign of Capricorn and the most masculine, Crowley says, the most masculine of the tarot trumps, the devil. Now, Oyen being an I, the I in the triangle symbol, which is uh, uh, used in a million things, including the dollar bill, and so, but mostly uh, uh, we see it as uh, representative, represented in the OTO uh, uh, lamin with the diving dove and the holy grail and uh, uh, the AA uh, I in the triangle Okay, uh, the all-seeing eye of God. So it's it's a single eye, and um, uh, one in Hebrew is oyen, or also unity or single is achad. So achad, uh, oyen, is uh, it's often uh, enumerated or abbreviated to a a. Okay, let's see. The next Hebrew letter is Tzadi. Now, I've got Tzadi here on the Emperor card, but uh, uh, in this book here, we're using kind of the, the standard Golden Dawn way of looking at it, so we'd put that on the Star card, but not here. There's a Tzadi. And here's how it looks. Now, you might think that you'd confuse that with Oyen, but really not. Look at that flat base. It's, it's really a different kind of thing. Now, Tzadi uh, is a TZ sound, uh, or sometimes uh, you could replace the, the Roman X with it. And uh, the, the path joins number seven with number eight. On, uh, excuse me, number seven with number nine on the tree of life. Okay. So, so no matter what you're using, whether it's the emperor or uh, or the star, the tzadi still appears in that same section. Tzadi is the path, path number 28 which joins Netzach victory to Yesod foundation. Tzadi is sometimes confused with Oyen. It looks like a man with a huge pompadour haircut kneeling forward. Okay. He's kneeling forward. He's got a huge pompadour. He's just been stabbed in the back with a yod on a stick. And he's got a real, <laughs> he's got a real thin neck too. 
Okay, the, I'll describe that again. Perhaps it'll help you <laughs> remember it. It looks like a man with a huge pompadour haircut kneeling forward. He's just been stabbed in the back with a yod on a stick. Don't confuse it with, <laughs> with Saudi final. I'm my own best audience here. Saudi is the fifth final letter. When used at the end of a word, it looks like a regular Saudi that got up off its knees. The numerical value of Saudi final is 900. Saudi, spelled Saudi Dalat Yud, the three letters enumerate to 104 and mean a fish hook. Now, there is a Tibetan magical tool. It's, it's her magical tool. She's uh, adopted it as her personal magical tool. That is a hook. Okay. And it's, a, well, I'll have her describe it tomorrow. Hang on for a second. Let's see if I can get her. Dear! She must be outside. It's so cool. It's, it hooks souls and brings them up into, oh, it's so cool. Anyway, I'm really surprised Crowley uh, didn't, didn't mention it because I think he was probably aware of it. Okay, sorry for that digression and for screaming in your ear. Saudi is spelled, uh, the three letters enumerative 104 means fish hook. It also re relates to words such as hunt, hunter, hunted, to lie in wait, capture, an adversary. Tzadi is one of the 12 simple letters and represents the zodiac sign of Aquarius and usually the star, but nowadays it's the emperor. Okay, What's, what are we doing time-wise here? I, I'm sorry, I, I just rambled on today. We will finish the small or the simple letters of the Hebrew alphabet uh, uh, tomorrow and uh, sort of complete this uh, particular little program of fun with the Hebrew alphabet. And uh, maybe we'll get uh, Constance to help us open tomorrow to tell her, tell us about her Tibetan soul hook. Until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself, be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will.